Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hyun Kyung Chung. I'm from the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers first to give this opportunity to introduce you the activities at IAEA. The title of this talk is The Data Needs of Electronic Molecule Collisions and Fusion Applications. So this um, presentation has four sections. The first one is on our uh, activities at IAEA, and the second is on needs of electromolecular collision data for fusion applications. And the third one is on our activities on this electromolecular collision data. And finally, I'll talk more about the um, IAEA coordinated activities on evaluation of collision data. So, um, International Atomic Agency is an international organization of 157 member states with and 2000, more than 2,000 steps. It is located in Vienna, Austria. And normally people associate IAEA with nuclear weapons, but we do a lot of different things. The mandate is that the agency shall seek to accelerate and enlarge the contribution of atomic energy to peace, health, and prosperity throughout the world. And one of the objectives is to assist our member states um, in planning for and using nuclear science and technology for many things, including the generation of electricity. So fusion is one way, one proposed way of making um, energy. So our unit was formed in 1977. Um, that was the time when there were a lot of international collaboration to explore the option of fusion energy to be used for energy pr production. But then already people realized that it is critical to have the right um, the atomic and molecular and plasma surface interaction data. So our unit is to uh, review the pro progress and achievements of this AM PSI data for fusion programs. And what we do is, we, we are not doing any research, but we, what we're trying to do is to stimulate the international cooperation in, in the data research. So what we did, what we mainly do is the coordination. So the main mechanism that we do is by the coordinated research project, where we invite people from fusion plasma modeling and also data measurements and theories to produce data, compile data, or evaluate data. And also we organize a lot of meetings, <coughs> consultants meetings, and technical meetings in, this, in the data research. And we publish reports and, and books and international bulletin. And also we um, have online databases to host some of the relevant data sets. We work with uh, many different communities. We work with data users, mostly from fusion laboratories. We also work with national um, data centers in, in the framework of data center network. We recently formed a code center network where we interact with code producers that provide the, um, the theoretical data sets for fusion programs. Many of our activities are uh, described in this uh, webpage. You can find some databases and also online computing capabilities and many other things including the uh, details on the CRP, the coordinated research projects, and, and meeting information, and workshops, and things like that. Okay, now I'll move on to the second topic of my talk, uh, the needs of electromolecule collisional data for fusion applications. This section is totally based on the present presentation by Detlef Reiter from Forschung Centrum in Jülich, Germany, at the ICTPIAA joint workshop. In, in 2012 this year. So uh, this is only a very short summary of his presentation. So you can find his the whole um, five, five hours of presentation in our, <laughs> I, I mean, three different uh, presentations. But anyway, you can find it in our web pages um, for more details. Okay, so <laughs> humankind, <laughs> we have mastered the um, fire from chemical processes long ago, but now we're trying to learn again to tend the fire uh, by using, using the nuclear processes, the deuterium and tritium uh, nuclear process to make um, high energy alpha particles and neutrons. So what's the device? It's not the wood, of course. 
So the, uh, the device of interest here is the um, talk out. The largest children reactor today is JET, the Joint European Taurus in UK, Colham Laboratories. They did the proof of um, principal experiments and they achieved the 60 megawatts of power using this jet. Um, but for making the fusion reactor, one has to uh, get the peak load as much as 10 megawatts per square meter steady operation. So um, here's the, the section of a tokamak and, and this part is most it's the highest, uh, it takes the maximum heat load and um, the peak load of uh, 10 megawatts per um, square meter is as big as uh, the, the heat load on the nodes of the space shuttle when we enter the Earth's atmosphere. So now the, the main challenge is, is, to, um, is the uh, area of plasma or interaction that sort of uh, can deal with this kind of heat load right now. So the JET is the biggest reactor today, but they, uh, there is another reactor being built. It's either on experimental dogma. It's International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, but they drop thermonuclear, so it's just the either. Um, it is being built to demonstrate the en fusion energy concept. And eventually what they are trying to do is to get to demo, which is going to be a first principle or reactor at two to four gigawatts production. Um, but we are not even there. The ITER just started construction in, in 2010, and they are supposed to complete sometime 2018, but maybe it, it is delayed um, due to many reasons. But the thing is, um, it is important to demonstrate it um, by making progress from JET to ITER and, and DEMO for diffusion energy power plants in the, in the future. So modeling is the way of extrapolating the understanding from present experiments to either and, and demo, of course. The atomic and molecular plasma surface interaction data are very important to model the plasma and, and also wall interaction. The composition of plasma is in such a way that, of course, for fusion reactions, we, we need to deal with deuterium and tritium and helium. But there are also uh, mixed materials in fusion reactor, especially on this plasma facing components like first wall or diverter and, and things like that, which I'll explain more in, in, in the next slides. And, and beryllium is the first wall for either and carbon and, and tungsten are the materials for diverter region. And also there are other elements like neon or argon or N2 for impurities. There are many ways of controlling the plasma burning and they are used for this um, control. Um, the plasma conditions um, in, the, in the core of the, of the reactor is the fully ionized, of course, and temperature is from 0.2 to 20 keV. But in the edge, it's a whole, whole lot different conditions where temperature is 0.1 eV to 200 eV. Because of this low temperature, there are a lot of neutrals, a lot of molecules, too. That's where your expertise come into play. Plasma modeling is rather, sim in a sense, not, I wouldn't say simple, but it's more like one the transport in the core region. When you say core, that means it's a core plasma inside the separatics. It's the last closed magnetic flux surface. The plasma inside the separatics is sort of confined by this magnetic surface. They mostly follow the magnetic uh, field, and, and so um, it's like one the transport in some way. However, outside the separatics, we call it edge plasmas. We call it dirty plasmas because there are so many other things there. And first, there are the multi-fluid models for ions, electrons. It's not just deuterium, tritium, but there are a lot of molecular ions as well and heavy ions as well. So uh, there is this uh, model that you have to do this, deal with this ions, electrons, and also the neutrals because the, the temperature is so low uh, one has to deal with these neutrals with Monte Carlo simulation, for example. Now, since neutrals do not follow the fields, now you have to deal with all this geometry in 3D. And the full sets of reactions with neutral, neutral collisions, and, and a whole lot of processes are important. So the electron molecule collisions are important in the edge plasmas, as I just said, and, and that's, uh, yeah. Okay, so what is the rule of edge plasma science? It is basically to make this burning plasma the mini star in this 
solid container possible. So the roll is basically the convection. It's like the candle where the fresh air coming in, but the used air goes out by the convection. We have to create the convection inside the fusion reactor so that um, we can keep burn the, the plasma. So cri cri critical criteria for either burning plasma is that the helium ash from the nuclear processes is removed fast enough. So here is the diverter region, and this is the core. And the first wall is, is beryllium. And then you inject the neutral, the, the fuel basically, and then the helium ash is moved to the, um, this region, it's called scrap off layer. So the scrap off layer, the, the field takes this ash out to the water region. So a lot of heat flux and the energy and, and particle transport are very important to uh, characterize the diverter and, and also design the diverter. So you pump out here. Okay, so chemistry is very important for particle and an energy transport in edge science. Here are some the magnetic field lines and people, um, to get the energy and particle uh, transport right, people use the energy continuity momentum and en energy equation, the fluid model. But you can see that there is the very important term here, which is sources. And the source is highly non-local because it follows all this magnetic field in all the tokamak area. And also it's very non-linear because there are a lot of uh, processes, like molecular processes and so on. So there will be some cross field transport by ion flux this way. So they are the outliers that, that escape the magnetic field. But then there will be eroded impurity from tungsten or carbon, and they will do follow the field and do something. <coughs> and there will be scrap off layer um, particles that's also following the magnetic field. And there will be ionization, charge exchange events, and the, the fuel, and, and some gas puff, and a whole level of sort of transport by the uh, neutrals. So, so here's one way of dealing with this kind of system. It's one way of doing the edge transport. Um, it's very popular code. It's called B2-Irene code. Um, the B2 is the code of the 2D fluid model. Um, it, it includes all not only the deuterium and tritium, but also helium and carbon and a whole lot of ions and plasmas. And Irene is the code, the Monte Carlo code for the neutral particles. And so Irene provides the source terms for this fluid model. And this fluid model will provide the plasma parameters like temperature and density and so on. And then these collision radial codes will uh, bring these um, plasma parameters and, and do the averaging and, and find the population density and things like that. And then feed back into the Irene. So, in this side, the, the data is processed possible, integrated and condensed and bundled. But on this side, the data has to be the unprocessed as possible, stay resolved and differential and all kinds of unprocessed way you have to present the data. So here's just one example of Irene. Um, the Irene was used a lot for carbon uh, diverter because the carbon is very good, has been really popular material for diverter. So for this, you know, they include CH4, C2H6, C3H8, and then they have to include all kinds of dissociated processes to, to do this kind of modeling. So we also, at, our, at IA in our unit, we maintain this atomic and molecular plasma surface ion, um, ionization interaction data priorities for fusion. You can find that it lists in this uh, web page um, I just took down for molecular data for either basically hydrogen um, ions and, and, and molecules and H2O and carbon and beryllium because of the wall material and oxides and nitrides and all kinds of hydrocarbons and radicals are important. There are some other elements that are important for other tokamaks but not for either. But many other uh, tokamaks use uh, boron or boron or lithium or cesium or molybdenum and so on. So, yeah. And also, um, there are molecule data that are relevant to plasma surface interaction studies because of the mixed materials of beryllium, tungsten, and so on. So, um, there are several other molecules, the exotic molecules, the data are <coughs> really for. 
and especially tungsten fluoride six. Fluorine six is, is very important for plasma surface interaction um, in relation to the, the water studies. Um, for molecular data, the complex physics, large variety of reactions are needed. Elastic collisions with ions are also very important for energy transport. Um, also important is the uh, vibrational ex excitation and excitation of dissociated pro products and also the excitation of atoms and molecules reflected from and or dissolved from, dissolved from walls are all important. Okay, so then what do we do at IAEA then about the electron molecule collision data? Related to the, um, the application that I just described, um, the way we do it by, is by the uh, coordinated research project. Um, the objective is to generate, compile, and evaluate the data or establish databases for fusion program, and sometimes we stimulate the development of new techniques. Um, this is very unique opportunity for comprehensive and synergistic collaboration. Normally, we uh, bring the representatives from 10 to 15 institutes worldwide and working on a very specific um, topic. We bring the experimentalists, the theoreticians, and modelers, and either personnel, and the duration of this collaboration is three to five years, and then we provide, we do not provide research fund, but we provide the, uh, we provide the organization of three meetings where people can collaborate each other. Um, so the data or the results from the CRP are published, of course, in journals, but also, we publish technical reports and, and numerical databases and libraries. And here is just the cover of our book, Atomic and Plasma Material Interaction Data for Fusion. And this is sort of published for after one CIP. Um, on average, we start one CRP a year. And it is not just for molecular data, but also atomic data and plasma surface interaction data. So I just highlighted it in yellow for the um, molecular uh, data relevant CRPs. Um, we had one in 2004 on atomic and molecular data for plasma modeling. But also currently we have two CRPs going on. In, like, the one started in 2009 is the light element atom molecule radical behavior in the water and edge plasma regions. And most recently, we just started the, um, the CIP on the data for kinetic modeling of molecules of hydrogen helium and their isotopes in fusion plasmas. And I'll talk more about these two CIP. So this, the most recent CRP, the, the, this is the objective is to assemble and generate and evaluate fundamental and derived data for collisional and radiative processes of hydrogen and helium ions and, and molecules and their isotopic variants resolved with respect to the excited states in a fusion plasma environment. Uh, we have several people, uh, several participants of CRP in, in this audience, and Anne, and Slava, and Christian here. Okay, so can it, here's uh, one view graph from Sawada-san from Japan. The kinetic modeling of H2 molecules are very important in understanding and designing the um, diverter region. Uh, plasmas. And so this was compiled in 1997. This was a level of complexity then, but uh, in 2005, there are a lot more needed needs. So more complete models are available now, but still it's in the process of being integrated. Why? The molecular process is very important for collision related models, <coughs> and the H2 are uh, uh, produced from the wall and, and off of the wall, and then they, they um, go through a whole lot of different molecular processes to produce the <coughs> hydrogen, atomic hydrogen, which is the most important element, of course, in the fusion rea reactor. And people use the uh, hydrogen, atomic hydrogen bomber line, um, but this bomber line, Intensity is composed of many, many um, contribution of the atomic hydrogen produced by the whole lot of different molecular processes. So one, have, one has to include all these molecular processes in their collision rated model to get this hydrogen bomb line intensity. 
So here is one note from the first meeting last year. Um, the upgrade of collision radio data by days to hydrogen deuterium and deuterium that is isotopically correct new data is, is very highly desirable. And present collision radio models treat hydrogen and helium separately, but it would be a major step to integrate the two. In present experiments, hydrogen and, and H2 molecules are formed on walls, but H2 quickly dissociates and hydrogen is just important throughout the diverter and edge plasma. However, in ITER, one expects a large region of recombining plasma, which is transi with transition to neutral gas, so the H2 is going to be much more important for ITER for diverter plasma behavior. For atomic hydrogen, um, it, is it is used for diagnostics neutral beam and also absorption of heating beam. So the key processes of interest is the formation of excited hydrogen um, atomic states by dissociation of H2, H2 plus, collisions with electron and H plus, and other charged plasma um, constituents in, in the plasma. And for molecular hydrogen, we are interested in excited H2, molecular cation H2 plus, and also H3 plus. Um, especially excited H2 are very important for the quantitative model of um, emission spectroscopy. When people find that there are a lot of data available, but we, what, we de what they need is an evaluation of the data. The key processes of interest is the collisions of vibrational excited H2 with H plus and, and also electrons. Also of interest is, is the um, are the collisions with helium and helium plus helium two plus. <coughs> Molecular cations are uh, important as an intermediary step for complete breakup and ionization of H2. The key processes are the formation by H2, H2 plus electron or proton um, and or collisions with all this. Um, one needs to understand the connection between vibrationally excited H2 plus and electronically excited H. Key issues for the molecular assisted recombination in linear plasma devices and also the resonance effect effects are very important due to the isotope effects. For H3 plus, um, it's formed from H2 plus and it quickly dissociates at temperatures where H2 plus might exist. So it's a rather a important as a reaction intermediary. And also, but also can be measured on linear machines uh, for interpretation of experiments. The key processes of interest are the electron plus H3 plus to produce H2 and, and so on. And electronically excited H3 plus is important for the breakup process. So the other CRP um, started in 2009, um, the light element CRP. The objective is to generate data for processes including excitation, ionization, recombination, and heavy particle collisions for atoms and molecules and their ions of lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, and nitrogen, and oxygen, and fluorine, actually. Um, here are the, um, the participants. But molecular data, in the, it's only a one third of the CRP, so um, <coughs> it's rather short summary on that, and one of the things is that we really need to inventorize the experimental studies of electron collisions with light hydrides, like lithium hydride, beryllium hydride, boron hydride, and so on. The beryllium H2 uh, is one of the um, most, see, most thought out, sought after element because of the plasma surface interaction um, studies right now. And there are much, there is much work on associated with combination of H2 plus, H3 plus, and so on. Um, and we are not quite sure if there are many uh, theoretical work on electron collisions with uh, boron, boron H plus, BH2 plus, and so on. Okay, so once you finish the CRP, uh, participants um, write a, a technical report on, on the summary of their work over three to five years um, during this CRP period. And it is published in this book of AP volume, Atomic and Plasma Material Interaction Data for Fusion Volume. Um, so I just 
list here all the, the, the papers that I found from AP volume. It starts, it dates back to 1992. In the volume two, I find some electron um, collisions with molecules. There are more with time, and the, the last um, AP volume 16, it was uh, published after the, the, the CRP on atomic and molecular data for plasma modeling was finished, and here are some list of the, the papers that are contained um, in the topic of electron molecule uh, collisions. I see some things here too. Okay, so some of the numerical data are hosted in, in our database, Aladdin. But the Aladdin was established to host only evaluated or recommended data. Unfortunately, uh, right now the the thing is, um, the data was compiled in 1980s and 90s. For example, the electron hydrogen uh, molecules. This is the only electron molecule data that I found in Aladdin. There are only 45 data sets, and it is from this book in 1987. So. Really, we need to do more about electron molecule data in, 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 in evalu and especially for evaluation, because this database is supposed to have only recommended and evaluated data. So that leads to our um, my final topic. This is our main focus right now, the evaluation and recommendation. So the typical edge transport code runs for the same model, same equations, same grid size. For texture, which is experimental um, tokamak in Munich, Germany, it takes about one day to do edge transport um, code or the, the simulations. For JET, which is the largest tokamak currently, um, it takes about one or two weeks. But if you do for the either size of tokamak, okay, here is a person. And this is a tokamak, so you see the scale. So it takes about three months. So the modelers are really, um, you know, they really want the best quality data because they don't want to throw out the three months work, right? And so it, it takes that long because of the, the important plasma chemistry going on, you know, nonlinearity and non-locality in, in sources. So that's why um, when, when we formed this code center network in, nine, in like five years ago, we thought that it would be a really good idea to organize, bring these code developers together and then so that they can improve the online code capabilities. So the data users can use the online codes and generate the comprehensive sets that they need. But after a few years, but after, uh, after a few years, they found out the online codes generate too many data sets without quality information. And data users say, we need complete sets, yes, but it has to be verified and validated by experts. They need the recommended data. So we talked to our data center network people, you know, the national data centers. We talked about the evaluation in last, last year. And basically the discussion was, data evaluation tests are very, very difficult in many ways. First, there are a lack of manpower. Experts are retiring or leaving the field. And evaluation normally requires multiple sets, but there are too many or too few. Yeah, and the, um, there are very few benchmark collisional ex experiments <coughs> and data experiments, or even fewer on the, on uncertainty estimates for theoretical data. So there are just too few evaluated data. So what should we do to improve the situation? So the data centers sort of agree that the evaluation activity should be organized in the community. And in order to do that, of course, one has to establish some way of evaluating data, so guidelines, for example. And the list of the recommended data sets will be available as the final product of this community evaluation. So we have uh, done coordination. Again, the IA doesn't do research, more or less. We do a lot of coordination. So we organized the meetings in February this year and June and September on procedures for evaluation of the AMPM 
PMI data for fusion, and also we had consultancy meeting on the data evaluation establishment of a standard library of the data for the fusion. And we finally, we did a, a bigger technical meeting on data evaluation for A and PSI processes and fusion. So here is, um, here are summary of the discussions. I'll, I'll just briefly go over it. First, um, we really have to build some kind of consensus among our data producing communities. And first, the change of notions, the database, some people find databases boring, but data research is really serious scientific work, and it could be really interesting. And so, and also, we have to sort of disseminate materials on the critical analysis skills, and also we have to enlighten the, the younger generation that data evaluation is not an option, but it's actually a very important part of your scientific work. Um, and also, we would like to disseminate the standard definitions of terminologies adopted by international organizations and professional uh, organizations. And so we would like to find an agreement on the procedure of evaluation towards a standard reference data. This was one of the proposal how to go about in the community. So we, so there should be some kind of group evaluation. It works as um, basically four or five panelists, including young and, and senior people. It works like an editorial board for a journal so that you know, these people will have a broad background, experimental theorists and uh, producers and users. And this way, this, by doing this group evaluation, it facilitates <coughs> the knowledge transfer from more exper experienced evaluators to younger generation. <coughs> and also review papers can be written out for this evaluation and finding some gaps in understanding the field and so on. Um, in order to do that again, the, 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 it is important to establish that the evaluation guidelines we should evolve with time and experience with broad collaborations from the community. And we also talked about what we should do about theoretical data evaluation. Um, so far, we don't have any um, criteria for the assessments of theoretical data. We need guidelines for uncertainty estimates of theoretical data. But we found that we shouldn't try to give a straight recipe for assessing uncertainties. But there might be some, some, some or several things to start with. Some people quote their uncertainties by comparing with experiments, and people find it very dangerous to do it. Um, well, there are many theories on the same thing, but if some theories are found to be better than another, then it should it may be given a benchmark status. Um, for scattering data, however, we found that you know, it, it's better to aim at um, getting ideas and suggestions rather than strict guidelines. And People think that theoreticians may have an idea already how to assess their data, the, the certainties of their, 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 their data. So um, one of the way is that journal policies. Journal policies can change the culture that theoretical data should provide the uncertainty estimates. For example, the PRA policies in the atomic structure um, paper, if the, if the paper claims the high accuracy blah blah data or calculations, they should provide how they come about the uncertainty of their data. So it's a policy there for atomic structure. And, and there are more papers uh, trying to um, do the uncertainty estimates in that case. So near term goals, we um, identify some priorities for evaluation, but we are trying, we are going to develop an evaluator's network, um, inventorize data sets that are now used by fusion platform modelers, and sketch out the guidelines for uncertainty assessment of theoretical data, and organize a, a, this the group evaluation for demonstration. Um, and we are going to talk with either project about the need of standard reference data for atomic and molecular processes used in the design. Um, this is just a prototype of um, 
the, the survey that, that we are going to do for the um, fusion community. So we are going to survey on the atomic molecular and plasma material interaction data for fusion applications from fusion modelers. For example, like you know, it works like you know this way, so people can get the survey and it can prior get the priority basically, and then we can also get a document of who's who's using what and what data sets are most popular and things like that. So we can get the priori priority list of critically needed data and also database of available data for evaluation, and it could provide a basis for the evaluated data library. And so once we have the survey done, then we can also compile the evaluated data sets already. So that one can do the evaluation of evaluated data. So here's one example where yeah, these are all evaluated data, but it's 1987. Again, it should be evaluated. The evaluated data should be evaluated now. Okay, so the long-term goal at IAEA is to to establish this global network towards the international agreed data library for fusion and other plasma applications. So let me summarize. The data for electromolecular collisions are very critical to understand the behaviors of plasmas in the diverter regions of magnetic confinement fusion devices. And the IAEA CRP, the coordinated research projects and technical meetings have been organized to address these issues, these data needs in collaboration with the um, atomic and molecular physicists and the fusion modeling community. Currently, the, the biggest challenge is to verify and validate the data required for fusion applications. Um, so our unit will actively participate in organizing and coordinating the community effort in data evaluation activities, ultimately towards the um, standard data library for fusion applications. Finally, we urge you the community to join us in this um, slew of data evaluation activities that will benefit everyone involved in this. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, uh, my question is about MAR, molecular assistive combination. I remember there was a workshop in Oak Ridge like 12 years ago where there was a lot of interest in dissociative attachment to vibrationally excited hydrogen producing H minus. So could you update us on this? What is the development since then? Uh, I can update on that. If anybody in this audience has some idea? Do you know if it is included in the database already? Or, or is it important? Yeah, I think it is very important, as I just listed in, in the data needs. Um, yeah, I mean, we have the CRP and there is one particular participant who is working on that specific topic. I forgot the name of it, but and, yeah, you can find the presentation from the CRP page. And, you know, but it is very important. But since my background is not in electromagnetic <laughs> collisions, I'm sorry that I could provide this. Yeah, my experience, I, I'm, I'm sorry that interact with the other question, my experience is that it's very easy to get collaboration with, uh, with them, so if you just contact me, you know, uh, so both, um, uh, Bass Brown, uh, so you can get easily on the board. Excuse this is me. My, this is my I have a non-scientific question, but remind me, where does the support for this activity come from, the IAE? Where does IAE get this support from, the United Nations? Um, the yes, it is a part of UN system. So, so support we have, comes directly. Yeah, we have 157 member states, and we have separate funding from UN, so we get the funding from these member states. So all member states, all member are, states. are contributing? Yes. But well, currently, of course, USA contributes the most. I'm glad to hear they're contributing. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that they're contributing and haven't decided to walk out. <laughs> no, there are seven major partners of ITER. There are seven countries involved in ITER financial support, like the US, uh, European Union, Japan, Korea, yeah. China, and Russia. ITER is a separate organization. It's again the international organization. But IAE has a collaborative agreement with ITER, so we work together. Uh, is it correct to uh, say that only isotropic cross-sections are usually of interest? The modeling doesn't 
go to the level of electron angular distributions or uh, uh, alignment and orientation? I think, as I said, in, in some of the Monte Carlo codes, they would like to include as much details as they can, the differential cross sections and things like that. But once they do, when, once they have the data, but then it is processed, the data is processed in their way, and it will be fed back into more microscopic codes. But I found, I heard that if they really want to get state resolved differential cross sections and as detailed as possible. This is my impression too when I participated in this meeting. Uh, people were talking that differential cross section is actually important, especially for uh, this near wall region uh, for interaction of uh, electrons with neutron and with molecular ions. So they need differential cross sections, and which basically doesn't exist. There is not much information about the dissociative uh, processes. Uh, I would think the differential cross-sections might be important in transport, yes. working a transport Yes, process. yes, this is a reason why it's important to, to see how many of, let's say, particles hit the wall. Where you go. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I'm sure you won't be able to answer, but maybe someone else can. You mentioned the excited states of H3+. Plus. I'm unaware that anyone has ever observed an excited state of H3+. Plus. Uh, do they really play a, play a role in fusion plasma? Well, but they, uh, <laughs> they exist, at this theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> theoretically, they exist. Yeah, yeah I, I just took it from the note. So. <laughs> yes, I didn't want to put but, you on the spot. But you, can, um, your, you can do the, the um, yeah, I got it from the um, technical report. You know, ap yeah. after one meeting, we always write out the technical report of what was discussed during the, the meeting, including the presentations. And this was the, um, I took it from the technical media report. So it seems like there is, there is, there can be, so I don't think there we were um, measured, but it can be measured in, in linear machines. So. It's probably you know about the work by uh, Alex Salinger, about liquid state of the yeah, but that, none of the theories give a lifetime. <laughs> so the fact that it exists in a theory code doesn't mean make it important in a fusion plasma. <laughs> but you are doing HC plus. But not the electronic right? excited, but yeah. I no, the, the ground state is hugely important. Yes. There's no, no argument about that. I'm just interested in the excited states. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Don't have collections, I think uh